<coughs> fellow lines and guests, I've got five happy dollars. First one is Mark. We miss Beth. We thank you for that. The second is a sad dollar for the people of California. I can't believe that state burned from both ends and headed to the middle. The other oh, happy buck for the crew that put together the 95th. You folks were awesome. The other two happy bucks, Marnie and I will have the privilege to be gone for the next three weeks. Association of Child Advocacy Centers. A lot of new and exciting developments have occurred since Charlie last spoke to our group in the spring, and I've asked him to return and explain how these uh, developments will impact the children in our community. Before I say the immoral words, please welcome my friend Charlie Ford. I would like to say I truly am blessed by his friendship. Please help me welcome Charlie Ford. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, President Line, and thank you guys all for your time and attention today. I told Ken uh, going into it, I know we were a little uh, crammed on the agenda, so I hope it's like the Oscars where you just play music to play me off the stage. When I don't really like okay, thank you. Thank you, Al. Uh, I also think it's appropriate, you know, after last week's uh, AARP presentation, we kind of have the full end of the spectrum here with today's uh, presentation focusing on uh, children's services. So. Some of you have heard me speak in the past, some of you haven't. I just want to spend a couple minutes with a brief overview and background on our organization. Children's Justice and Advocacy Center, or CJAC for short. We're a private nonprofit organization that serves victims of child abuse and their families in Cowlitz and Wakaiakum County. To understand what we bring to the community, it's important to understand how things worked before we came into existence in 2009. It used to be when a child was the victim of sexual abuse or severe physical abuse, there would need to be an investigation to determine exactly what occurred and how to move forward. So that involved bringing that child into a police interrogation room to speak with a, a police officer about the experience. They would then bring that child into the prosecuting attorney's office to speak with a deputy prosecuting attorney. The child would then be interviewed over at the child welfare office by, by CPS and several other well-intentioned professionals would speak to this child to determine what had happened so that the community could respond. And what happened was a number of people in our community came together. They realized that the investigative process was re-traumatizing this child victim. And so our prosecutor, law enforcement, uh, victim advocates, a number of people in our community came together and said there's got to be a better way. And that was the catalyst for the formation of CJAC. Now, when a child is suspected of being the victim of abuse, they're brought in to our family-friendly, child-focused center to meet one-on-one -on -one with our child forensic interview, who's a therapist trained to conduct the conversation in a therapeutic and developmentally appropriate manner. We provide specialized trauma counseling for that child, their siblings, and their parents because we understand how the experience impacts the entire family. So now when a child is the victim, they're brought into CJAC, the, they only have to speak one time. The professionals, the detective, the deputy prosecuting attorney, the CPS investigator, they're going to observe the conversation through our observation room, but the child will not feel their presence. The, the real idea here is to make sure the child is not re-traumatized and that the community wraps specialized counseling and medical services around that family to help them on the process of healing. So that is who we are and why we exist. But I really want to spend the focus today talking about what has changed over these last six months and a year in terms of local developments and how they're going to impact the children of the community. On the legislative front, State House Bill 1539, also known as Aaron's Law, was signed into law in June. Aaron's Law is a piece of legislation that's going to require all Washington State schools to provide child sexual abuse prevention curriculum. The law initially establishes a state task force to develop the curriculum, and I'm one of 15 people who have been selected across the state to compose that task force. So from January until June of 2019, I'll be up in Olympia for a, a number of meetings and workshops for us to develop this specific curriculum that will eventually be implemented into Washington State Schools. So this was a piece of legislation that, that we had worked at the state level to advocate for. 
and we're just uh, I will keep you guys updated on those developments we're really excited to be a part of that group so that we can represent the local interests of Collins County at the state level on the that's sort of has to do on the the youth education and the youth prevention side I also want to talk a little bit about the parental education and prevention we're really excited we are we have developed a new partnership with head start to offer a series of parent prevention groups for head start parents and families we are going to be we have developed and will be providing uh, specifically child sexual abuse prevention curriculum to parents of head start families at head start locations and we'll be providing free child care for all of those families who participate so the more that we can educate young parents on how to appropriately protect and safeguard their children and set boundaries we are hoping to reduce the instances of abuse here in our community as long as there's victims of abuse cjack will be here to serve them but it's our ultimate hope to eventually work ourselves out of a job so we're investing a great deal of time and energy on the prevention and education side couple of other exciting community developments. We have obtained a grant from the state of Washington to get new mobile forensic recording equipment. We have a very specialized uh, forensic recording system for our center, but we also conduct some investigations and interviews with children who are unable to travel into our location. And to give you guys some examples, sometimes if a children is hospitalized, sometimes as a result of the abuse, or they are in a residential treatment facility, or other circumstances prevent them from physically being able to come to our center, we can now come to them and provide a forensically valid services and interview there. So we're excited about bringing that to the community. Over these last six months, we were awarded the Small Nonprofit of the Year Award from the Chamber of Commerce, which we were very proud of. We were also uh, glad to be the recipient of 100 Men Who Care had awarded us uh, their quarterly award, which allowed us to increase the amount of mental health services that we provide to our local victims. In terms of some local trends that we've been seeing, we are seeing an increase locally in the number of victims of child sex trafficking and child pornography. It's an issue that's getting more attention here in the media, but in addition to us partnering with all local law enforcement entities and jurisdictions, we also partner with the FBI, NCIS, and federal agencies, and they're the ones that do the majority of our child pornography and sex trafficking investigations. This is something that is just kind of gaining awareness at the community level. So we are also taking the lead on providing the training for law enforcement, prosecuting attorneys, and child protective services workers who are starting to work these investigations. So we're sending our multidisciplinary team, we're sending our prosecutors up to a regional training in Bellingham in February, specifically on child pornography investigations, and down to a regional training in Portland in May. We're sending 12 investigators from our community CJAC is we're sending them down to that training so that they can increase their skill level and expertise on working with those particular investigations. Another update I want to provide and some questions I've been receiving from the community, you know, it, of course this, we're just getting past election season and a number of people were asking me, how would the, the elections and the recent results, how does that impact CJAC? And I just wanted to, to briefly state that it doesn't impact CJAC. We are very fortunate um, to have you know, bipartisan support for a completely nonpartisan organization, so we are not impacted by, by some of those trends and changes. Child abuse is not something that we politicize, nor should anyone. So it is one of those things where we, we, we're pleased to have broad support from the entire community and political spectrum. Another thing I want to talk about today is, and I have a whole bunch of flyers that Pat has here, we on Saturday, November 24th, so the Saturday after Thanksgiving, it's our annual uh, holiday event. It's a buy a stack for CJAC. It is a community fundraiser holiday event. It serves as a fundraiser for CJAC, but to be honest, we primarily use it just as an inclusive community event for children and families. So we take and donate about 100 of the tickets every year to families uh, from Head Start, families from the community house, families from the emergency support shelter. If there is a family who wants to attend, we give them free tickets. We do not want finances to be a barrier for that. And we're able to do that because we have a number of local businesses who have provided support, both uh, financially and by donating items for our raffles. 
So it's, it's again, Saturday the 24th. It's from 8.30 to 11 at the Cowlitz Expo Center. There is a free kids' activities and crafts, free pictures with Santa. It's really uh, just a fun, inclusive community event that sort of uh, kicks off the holiday season for a lot of us. <laughs> okay, it's an important disclaimer that Phil just made. Phil is not allowed anywhere near the kitchen or even the service line, so just uh, if anybody is fearful at all. Uh, but yeah, we are really um, a community organization. We were formed, like I said, through the result of a number of people coming together, and that's really what we are today. And so if anybody wants to be more a part of CJAC, if you ever want to, to learn more, if you ever want to volunteer and get involved, Please speak with myself, speak with Phil or Pat. You know, it's obvious that, that we are very inclusive and a low barrier group if we allow Pat to be a board member. So that should speak, you know, highly to our inclusivity. But no. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Let that be a lesson. No, um, really though, we are we're thrilled to be a part of the community. We're we're just grateful for all of the support that you guys in this room and everybody throughout the community has shown for us over the years. So I did want to leave just a couple minutes to open it up for some questions. <coughs> Pat Palmer. Uh, what's uh, the track record this year, Charlie? How many interviews? We have conducted just about 200 interviews year to date, which represents about a 10% increase over last year, year to date, and 2017 was a 29% increase over 2016. So as you can see, the trend is we are serving more and more victims of child abuse. And people ask me periodically, does that mean there's just more abuse happening in our community? And no, not necessarily at all. What's happening is more professionals who are mandatory reporters, <coughs> or adults in the community who become aware of instances of abuse, are reporting those instances to law enforcement or child protective services. More of those child protective services and law enforcement investigations are resulting in CJAC being able to serve those kiddos. So while it's always alarming to see the number on the rise, it actually represents progress for our community because more of those kiddos are getting the services and help they need. Great question. Thank you guys so much for your time. Talking of where of, this is November and Thanksgiving is just around the corner. We all need to be very thankful that we have CJAC that will help the youth in our community and for the little ones. With that, we would like to give you a, it's not a beer stein, it's, it's, a, it's a water glass with our safety on it. But the most important thing, we would love to have you as a member of the Pioneer Rising. <laughs> So you can be you can be a double member. Okay. I'll do for free. He is a member of our Pioneer Alliance, but he has an application to get to. Oh, somebody. Yeah. With that, we're gonna go on vacation. for the great desserts. President Ken, first choice goes to Mike Parker. And second, whatever's left over goes to Gina. Blue ticket. Two, three, three. Six, nine. How many still in it? Eight. Seven. And for some reason, I was told that that pot is in the neighborhood of eighteen hundred dollars. You already had one like that. You know you did. Throw your ticket away. Red ticket zero five five nine five seven. Zero five five nine five seven. 
Nobody has it? Paul. As soon as the crowd turns out of the way, where would you like it to go? Relay. With that, have a great Thanksgiving. See you in two weeks.